What's up, y'all? Logan Parker, Heirloom Builders. Welcome back. Um, we are on site with the wedding barn that we're building out here in Alamance County, North Carolina. We're prepping for pouring a concrete monolithic slab foundation. What that means is monolithic slab is mono meaning one, lithic meaning stone slab foundation. Um, that means it's one concrete board that's going to be the footings, the rest, and bear the weight of the framing above. The footing spreads the load of the frame that sits on top of it. The foundation wall, which is the vertical section right here, and the floor. All three of those elements of this foundation, the footing, the foundation wall, and the slab floor are all done in one concrete placement. Um, so that's what makes it a monolithic slab. And it's really important to make sure that you follow a few details to get a really high quality job. And I'm gonna show you what those are right now. So let's get to it. Today we're talking about under slab prep and a few of the things that are critical for us to get a super flat, super strong, watertight slab that's not gonna condense much moisture, it's gonna resist cracking, and look really good over time. So um, I'm here with the Masons. What's up, Jason? How you doing today? Doing well. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this concrete under slab prep. What are the main elements here? Um, behind us that you guys have been working on today? Well, after we got the, the gravel down to grade and we tamped it, um, we came in and we started putting the poly down. This is 10 mil plastic. And after the plastic, we came in with the wire. And it just so worked out on this lab where it worked out perfectly from one end to the other without any cuts. So we, we cured that today. Um, where this plastic overlaps the holes, had to cut it so that it would fall down in the hole and we also put another piece over top of that so that we could avoid any vapor barrier. Um, um, ultimately the goal with, with the vapor barrier being what? The moisture out. Yeah, we definitely want to keep the moisture out. The, the, <clears throat> even though this building's open, moisture can break concrete down over many, many years. Nice. I guess that's free freestyle cycle mostly. Well, I don't really know. I mean, we've been in mills and stuff, and it's just uh, it's almost like there's, it's hard to determine the rhyme or reason as to why a floor might break down in a particular section. But if you go up and under it, usually the plastic broke down or there was improper soil under that. But it's like rotten almost the concrete itself. Wow. If there's no vapor barrier. Yeah, like you can almost like peel it away with your fingers once you've started to bust it into pieces. It's just, you can just tell it's really, really broken down. Wow. So yeah, good reason to use the vapor barrier. Yep. Of course we had to put the plastic down and then we had to put the grid in there and get it situated before we could cover the wire because there's no way to get back to it after you cover it with the wire. Um, Personally, I like to set up some saw bucks and tie my grids so you don't have to bend over. Um, this is number four rebar at the slab. We've got two runs going on the exterior footing, uh, three each way in all the low points. Um, 16 inches deep on the footing itself with a four inch floor over top of that. That's a lot of concrete. We overlap our wire six inches or one grid each way. Because if it doesn't overlap, there's a really good chance that it could crack where the, the remesh panels intersect. I also wanted to point out these thickened footers right here that you can see right behind me. This is um, a section of concrete that is dug out. The gravel has been dug out so that we have a thickened section of concrete where every point load, which is gonna be one of these timber frame posts, is gonna sit to support the weight of the walls and the roof above. It needs to be thick because if it was just a slab floor, that's only four inches thick and that's not gonna really support the load of a whole bunch of framing above it. Um, so we really need to make a really deep, wide concrete footer to spread out the load um, from that framing above it. And our structural engineer specified how big these concrete footers need to be. Um, so it's really important that 
you check the code book or have a structural engineer get involved and tell you exactly what size footers that you need and how much rebar and what size needs to be inside those thickened footers so that it resists cracking and can support the load of the frame that you intend to build. We take a lot of time to make sure to grade this pad out super level and flat so that our concrete slab is four inches at a minimum everywhere. We don't want, you know, four inches here, eight inches there, another four inches or three inches down, you know, around because it's going to crack in those thin spots. The more uniform it is, the easier it's going to get up. It's the easier it's going to be for us to cut control joints and have the cracking that's inevitable take place on those control joints. Nice, clean cuts in the concrete. You and I had talked um, briefly about scoring. Control joints. Control joints, talk a little bit about that and yeah, why. Yeah, I mean, the concrete's gonna crack. So the ideal behind the control joints is to make it crack where you want it to in a neat, neater fashion. So that's really all that's behind that. And it'll, it, um, you're pretty much just making it crack where you want it to. That's, that's what you're shooting for. And here, we're gonna try to avoid these thickened footers. I think you made a really good point that it's we can cut it there, but it's not going to crack there because it's... right. Um, when you on a four inch slab, when you cut it, you need to cut an inch deep, minimal, uh, preferably an inch and a quarter. That's going to allow it to cut all to break all the way through the slab. And if you to cut an inch deep in this twenty inch footing, it's not really going to do any good on making it break all the way through. But we're going to try to avoid it. Cool. On either side. And then you had mentioned before about, um, you know, making sure your foundations are, you know, square and plumb and right on the batter board lines. Um, and it rained recently. Did you find any issues after the rain? We had a, some, we had some of our form wanted to settle just a little bit, but nothing more than an eighth of an inch, which we picked them back up when we adjusted those. We got it all braced off now. I feel good about the forms. Um, we're gonna pour, you can look here on the form. We're gonna come around with really, really tight concrete at a low slump, maybe a three and a half to a, a very tight four inch slump, and we're gonna pour it up just below, probably about six inches below the moving floor. And then the guys will come back and they'll pour up, literally, they'll, pour, they'll wet it up just a little bit, maybe a four and a half, five inch slump, a little bit easier to work with. And that's what we'll do the form. And the stiff mud will allow there to be less pressure on this floor. Nice. So, you know, the wetter it is, the more it wants to push. The, the easier it is, the more it wants to try to stack up on itself. Nice. So these braces, these wood braces that are angled, the only thing needed for these metal forms, because they're so rigid, to brace for the weight that's pushing out concrete. And like you said, that, that higher, Lower slump. Low slump. Low slump to, to, to set down in the footer first. It was not gonna have a whole lot of pressure pushing the forms yeah, you out. measure slump from however much it, they put in a cone and however much it settles from when they pull the cone off, that's how much slump it is. So the wetter it is, the more slump you would have. So a four, three and a half is what they pour curbing gutter with. It has to be able to stand up to that shaping, and that would be perfect for here. Gotcha. For the bottom of this footing. They have to have it a little wetter than that to be able to work to put a flat slab down, though. What slump would that be? It'll probably be about a four and a half. See, those guys will want to get out of here as soon as possible, so it'll probably be a four and a half or so. If, if we were pouring it without the laser screed, it'll probably be a five and five, something like that. Give you some more work time. No, nah, not just be able to get back to it and the workability of the concrete. Cool. One important uh, thing to note with plumbing penetrations is that um, you can see these PVC pipes coming up through the plastic right now. Those are going to also be coming up through the concrete floor. And so it's really important to protect them from the expansion and contraction of the concrete. So what we do is we wrap these pipes in plastic and tape that plastic to the pipe so that as the concrete fully engulfs this pipe the pipe itself is protected so um, during expansion and contraction of that concrete it's not going to cross the pipe um, 
So that's a really important step you wanna make sure to do before you pour concrete. Go around and make sure that all of your pipe penetrations in the concrete slab have plastic wrapped around them. Um, the pipe insulation on the water supply lines is already encapsulated in rigid foam insulation. This, this foam insulation right here, so that will serve as the pipe wrap. So that's about it for under slab prep. Um, so check this out. I mean, already you can see how much moisture is underneath this slab, underneath this plastic, that the plastic vapor barrier is stopping from migrating up into the concrete. And um, eventually what's going to happen, concrete is porous. So you know, if you pour a concrete slab and don't put a vapor barrier under it, moisture is going to migrate up from the earth underneath through the concrete and it can fog your windows. It's going to make the, the slab condense a whole lot more moisture if the temperatures get cold and all of a sudden you're going to have a slick floor that's wet and um, not cool so it's really important to put down a vapor barrier we use a 10 or 12 mil poly for our vapor barrier um, and that way as we're walking on it during this under slab prep it has a much less chance of actually um, getting holes poked in it from from the gravel that's underneath it so um, the thicker the plastic that you can afford, the better. That's going to be the less penetrations. If we're doing a basement slab floor, we're going to use 12 or greater poly vapor barrier just so that there are no penetrations from walking on top of the vapor barrier that's sitting on top of the gravel. So anyway, um, this is some of the most critical things that you can do to get a really high quality concrete slab floor. And I hope you got something out of this video. If so, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be following this project all the way through framing and finish and we're gonna show you how it's done. So as always, y'all, thanks for watching. Until the next one, peace out.